Not too many abandoned submarines will stand the test of time, and going so deep underwater can make things pretty easy to get lost. Nuclear power on board can result in releasing of radioactive fuel, which makes discovering lost or abandoned subs pretty important. In some cases, in order to preserve these vessels' historical importance, they must be properly maintained as a museum. Bases were also constructed in order to protect these expensive military machines. From U-boats mysteriously washing ashore to submarines that have retired from their duties. Here are Abandoned Submarines and Bases Part 2. But first, quick shout out goes to James Keen for leaving us this comment on our Sniper Rifles video. Thanks for sticking around until the end of the video. That certainly seemed like a crazy shot that Canadian guy pulled off. And shout out to our Finnish subscribers as well. Let us know in the comments section if you would feel uncomfortable getting into a submarine after hearing some of these creepy stories and maybe we'll feature you in an upcoming video. Number 12. The USS Albacore the USS Albacore was originally designed as an experimental research submarine for the Navy to test out a few features that are used in today's submarines. This makes it a stepping stone to modern day submarines which features extensive hydrodynamic and wind tunneling in order to increase speed and maneuverability. It measures 204 feet in length and could displace 3,000 tons. The project was top secret and eventually launched in 1953. Modifications to it were made throughout the period of nearly two decades. Eventually, it ran on nuclear power, which resulted in the USS Nautilus, which was the world's first fully operational nuclear sub. The USS Albacore was decommissioned in 1972, serving a role as a reserve, then turned into a museum in Portsmouth Naval Shipyard of Kittery, Maine. Visitors are encouraged to check out the interior of the submarine and try to imagine being one of the crew members back in the Cold War. Number 11. The Illuminat Operating as the world's first aluminum submarine, this 80-ton vessel was a part of a deep-sea research project built by Reynolds Metal Company. The private company that was contracted to build it was trying to promote the usage of aluminum. It's known to have served an important role of recovering lost atomic weapons during the Palomares incident. When this happened, not one, but four hydrogen bombs went missing in 1966 over the coast of Spain. It appeared as though a few planes made contact at this moment, taking the lives of three out of seven crew members. One of the four hydrogen bombs on board exploded due to the contact upon impact, but it didn't set off a nuclear reaction. The Illuminat did its job and located at least one of those 1.5 thermonuclear weapons about 3,000 feet below water. It's no longer in operation, but it might get asked to do a job if it really needs to. Number 10. Kleinz U-Boot Seehund also known as the SEAL in English, the Sea Hun was created during World War II by the Germans and is known for sinking various merchant ships. The Sea Hun was constructed from 1944 to 1945 and 285 total were built. 35 of those were destroyed or lost and the origins began with the salvage of British X-Class submarines that we mentioned in our first Abandoned Submarines and Bases video. Due to its smaller size, it was designed to be able to get past anti-submarine nets and place explosives below the ships. They were fitted with two G7E torpedoes, which were designed originally for U-boats. During the first operation, 18 Sea Hunts were sent out to sea, but they encountered a vicious storm, which resulted in 15 of them being lost or destroyed. Eventually, they were able to sink a large freighter off the coast of Great Yarmouth. After all the fighting was over, many were discovered by the Allies, and several are on display in museums in France, Great Britain, and in the United States. Number 9. The HA-19 Japanese Midget and Torpedo Subs Japanese submarines were quite fast compared to the German Sea Hun, and the HA-19 was able to hit a high speed of 26 miles an hour when surfaced and 22 miles an hour underwater. They consisted of two-man crews and were about 78 feet in length. They played a role in the attack on Pearl Harbor but were sniffed out and even fired upon by the USS Helm. The U.S. Navy had photographic evidence of five Japanese midget subs that washed ashore the night before the attack. During the end of World War II, the Japanese used a form of suicidal warfare techniques such as the kamikaze airplanes, but also the submarines. Here we see a Kaiden submarine that would translate to the return to heaven, and they succeeded in sinking the USS Underhill. Number 8. The SMU-118 in an attempt to be towed to the coast for scrapping, a storm struck the English Channel in 1919 and this photo here shows the SMU-118 off the English coast of Hastings. Shocked beachgoers take an up-close gander at this mysterious vessel, almost as if it was an extraterrestrial aircraft. 
For a while, it became a tourist attraction, and people would actually have to pay for admission to see it. Later on that year, they figured it would make more money being sold for scrap, and it was dismantled. It worked originally as a mine lane submarine placing explosives in enemy territory. Number 7. French Oisson Completed by the French Navy, it was made at the Arsenal de Cherbourg in 1978 and served until 2001. It was a part of the Agosta-class diesel-electric fast-attack submarine and ranged in length between 219 feet to 249 feet. It can fire the SM-39 Exocet anti-ship missile, which cannot be detected until it's only 6 kilometers away. Although these submarines are no longer used by France, they've been exported to countries like Spain, Pakistan, and Malaysia. This one we see here was utilized as a training vessel for the growing Royal Malaysian Navy. It's unclear whether or not it was sold or donated to Malaysia, but eventually it was announced to just become a museum ship in 2009. In September of 2011, it was transported to the city of Klebang. Number 6. U-Boat Playground It's interesting to see how machines of war can be transformed into places where children can laugh and play while they have no idea the havoc these things were capable of. This is found at the Technik Museum in Germany, which consists of a real German U-boat. This was known as a U-9, and people can climb on it for themselves. There isn't a ton of information in English when you Google it, but it's known that this one here was decommissioned in 1993. Number 5. The USS Thresher Imagine being an admiral with control of nuclear submarines, and then all of a sudden, one of them seemingly vanishes in thin air, or, uh, water? Considered to be the fastest and quietest submarine in the world, she had an advanced weapon system equipped with a state-of-the-art sub-rock missile. The USS Thresher was the first nuclear-powered submarine that was lost at sea. It was named after the Thresher Shark and officially launched in 1960. In April of 1963, the Thresher was performing depth tests to see how low it can go. At around 400 feet, the ship was checked for any kind of leaks, so it didn't seem to be a problem. Once the Thresher reached a thousand feet deep, the transmission quality began to degrade, likely due to a huge decrease in temperature that it wasn't ready to handle. The ship's ability to communicate also decreased to the point where the things the commander was saying were nearly incomprehensible. Finally, an implosion was detected. Today, it's still a mystery exactly what caused it to sink, but it was never recovered. Sixteen officers and ninety-six men were all lost, and all hopes of retrieving the USS Thresher were abandoned. Number 4. The USS Scorpion There are many submarine mysteries that we might get into, but it seems as though some massive vehicles can simply vanish within the depths of our vast oceans. This impressive ship was commissioned in July of 1960. After a routine extended train operation, the Scorpion never returned to the shipyard on the day it was supposed to, and it simply vanished. A crew of 99 seamen who boarded on the first nuclear subs were somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean, and all communications were lost. Once they realized that no one was responding for 10 days, the Navy assumed they were all casualties. A few months go by, and the ship was discovered, largely intact, 10,000 feet below the surface. In 1993, the Navy declassified information about their stories of events. The Navy claims an electrical error caused them to launch a torpedo at themselves, as strange as it sounds. People who were previously on the submarine feel as though this is a false narrative released by the Navy official. Private investigators claim that there was a serious lack of maintenance on the ship. Number 3. The INS Dakar Another mysterious disappearance of an important submarine took place with the INS Dakar, which was a British T-class submarine that was purchased by Israel in 1965. Three years later, in 1968, en route to the home country in the Mediterranean Sea, the ship lost communications with other ships, with the final check-in being just off the coast of the island of Crete. Israel had searched for the lost submarine for four days before temporarily calling off the search. They had originally denied that the submarine was lost in order to not anger hostile neighbors in the region. Once the heat was turned up a little bit and people were asking too many questions, they said that the sub sank due to mechanical issues, but the truth was, Egypt had actually opened fire on it. Number 2. Soviet Foxtrot San Diego What the heck is a Soviet attack submarine doing on display at a maritime museum in San Diego? These are some of the Soviet's largest non-nuclear submarines and it often followed and stalked U.S. submarines and other warships throughout the North Pacific and Arctic Oceans. A close call took place in the Sea of Japan and a tense moment when it was only 500 meters away from a U.S. frigate. Originally, this thing was sold to Finland after the Cold War was over as a museum. Then it was sold to Vancouver, then to Seattle, before getting to San Diego, California. During one point in time, it was going to be sunk to be used as an artificial reef, but public outcry to keep it got to be too much, and they kept it after all. Number 1. St. Nazar Submarine Base 
Located in southwestern France, a large fortified base was constructed by the Germans at the end of the Second World War as one of the largest harbors on the Atlantic coast of France. U-boat operations would begin from this base almost immediately after it was completed in 1940. The base was 300 meters long, 130 meters wide, and 18 meters high in order to accommodate and protect Germany's valuable equipment. Much of it was reinforced with concrete and granite to prevent it from being victims of Allied bombing raids. Anti-aircraft guns, machine guns, and mortars were also placed here to make it a formidable fortification. So which one did you think was the most interesting? Let us know in the comments section, and we'll see you next time.